There we go. Be gone. There we yeah. go. <laughs> Get in there. As a parent, my house is full of toy dinosaurs. Most of them are unimaginative in color, especially the older ones. However, the other day, I stepped on one in my bare feet, which was really awesome. It's red and green and yellow, and it's got all these cool patterns. Which led me to a question. Will we ever know what color dinosaurs were? Is there any way that we could know? Well, it turns out Dr. David Hone is a world-leading paleontologist at Queen Mary University, London. He might have the answers, and I'm going to see him now. Dave. Hello. I've brought you some dinosaurs. Oh, how, how kind. <laughs> I want just what you need more of. Um, first, I want some ideas about, about how good these are, but I was noticing that Parasaurolophus, uh, in addition to looking like I think pretty accurate. It actually yeah. has some nice coloration to it. I mean, first of all, this could have been the coloration, right? Could. Could have been. Why not? And some people would say, well, yeah, this could have been, that could have been, they could have been hot pink, they could have been shiny gold. Anything goes. In actuality, does anything go? Until 10 or so years ago, whenever I got asked, you know, what color were dinosaurs? And the answer is always, not only do we not know, we'll never know. Okay. This is right. That's you know, this just not going to happen. There is no possible way we can do this. Dave's point here is that fossils are rocks. All of the biological material that may have contained color has been replaced by minerals. So essentially what we see in fossils is just different shades of rocks. And then that changed and that no longer became true. We have a fair idea of their color. Okay, so I want to find out how they, they learned that, but also I just happen to have among my gubbins here some paints, <laughs> and I thought we would try to fix up as kind of a professional courtesy to the people who made these. Yeah, to Im some, improve, some, some improvements. Possible, yeah, yeah, some improvements. Uh, is there a color you want to start with? Well, here's one we can have a go at, actually. So this is a fairly indeterminate, uh, what we call a paraavian. So this is the group of dinosaurs very close to birds. Okay. Oh, he's, he's having fun. You'll need, you'll need red, black, and white for this. Red, black, and white. Um, it should be totally co covered in feathers, but apart from that, we're onto about the right thing. Okay. So how do we know this? Many dinosaur fossils are covered in a fuzzy edge. And when we look at this edge closely, we can definitely see that these were feathers. So how do we know what colors they were? Um, this comes down to basically a whole bunch of fossils, unsurprisingly. A lot, of, a lot of the color, not all of it, but a lot of those colors are basically little patches of pigment that are held in tiny subcellular structures called melanosomes. Conveniently for us, those subcellular structures can preserve. Most tissues are made up of cells, and cells have subcellular structures. The nucleus is a good example. Another example is melanosomes. Now, melanosomes are what can give cells their color. When tissues make feathers, these melanosomes can be exported into the feathers, giving the feathers color. And now we have some fossils that are so incredibly detailed that we can actually see the shape and size of these melanosomes. And that gives us a clue as to the colors that the feathers might have had. And the shape happens to correlate with the color inside it. So if you went to the DIY store Got and it. red is always in the tall one and black is always in the squat one, we're looking at the sh basically the shapes of the jars All right. and going, that's a red one and that's a black one. And we know that because currently reptiles we, we, have those yeah, shapes. Yeah, we, we see it in all manner so of assuming birds. Assuming that that shape has held. But it's, it's very consistent across huge numbers of very different species. Ostriches and penguins and owls and okay. are doing this the same way. Okay. But yeah, the one I'd go for is a thing, actually I worked on the original animal called Anchiornis, though not on the color work which came later on a okay. different specimen. Uh, Anchiornis is mostly black, but with some white spots on it and a little kind of red fluffy bit in the middle on the top oh, of his sweet. head. All right. So 
Hanky Ornis here. Yep. Where you have these little packages, you have very, very long, thin ones that are kind of chipple artery or very, very long, thin okay. sausage. They all tend to be sausagey. Oh, so, all right. Um, so very, very long thin ones are actually that kind of black iridescent. Okay. So what you see in things like starlings, um, magpies, the head of mallard ducks and stuff like that. Um, when they're squatter, um, and so more traditional sausage shaped, mm -hmm. um, they're black. And when okay. they're nearly circular or, at least, or spherical, very close to that, they're somewhere between red and brown. So I'm not gonna put on ready brown, no, I'm gonna put on proper red. On right, because we want him to be really bright and sexy. My specimen is a bit slapdash, but several artists have taken a shot at reconstructing Anchiornis based on the data, and in general, this is what they look like. Now, do we know that this would be an adult feature, or is this something like, you know... So, so this is the classic problem, because, yeah, we've, we've done one Anchiornis, and this is what it looks like. And it's very likely that that's a good representative of the species. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's ex exceptional <laughs> work. Um, but of course, it's really, really hard to say. You know, male and female birds, often different colors. Juveniles and adults, often different colors. Uh, Anchiornis was living at a time and place that got pretty cold in winter. Okay. Might they have shed into white? in winter. Well, and speaking and of And just change their patterns. It's like most birds, I mean, I imagine the skin is fairly dull underneath the feathers, right? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We don't know. Okay. And we don't know how covered in feathers they were? And Keonis at least as covered as a modern bird. Actually okay. more covered than a modern bird because even birds have those kind of scaly feet and they didn't, they were feathers to the tips of their toes. Oh, there we go. Keep going. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Get in there. All right, so there's our Anchiornis done. So what other possibilities are there that we, that we just may never see? I mean, what would, what would hot pink look like in a melanosome? So there, are, so there are some, in addition to the red form okay. of melanin, like I, this, I wanna, I there, just, there I are some- hot pink dinosaur. I mean, flamingos are exactly that color. The birds have a vast variety of colors and not just in their feathers, in their skin too. There's, you know, all kinds of vultures with actually really bright heads, blues, reds, yellows, greens. Yeah. It doesn't have to be in the feather. It can be the skin okay. too, just like lizards and snakes. Loads of them very, very multicolored. Um, so it's certainly possible that there are, again, much more interesting colors out there for dinosaurs that we're not yet picking up because right now we're looking at the melanosomes. So there are probably going to be other color features in these specimens that we cannot identify yet. But remember, these fossils are around 160 million years old. It's incredible that we can identify the melanosomes in the first place. We have, at this point, only half a dozen dinosaurs where we've done this kind of work and we have an idea of their colors and patterns. What, what actually could happen to give us much better idea of this? I think it's just the numbers. Like, we've got the specimens. There are hundreds of feathered specimens of Anchiornis out there. To go and sample all of them, and go, is this one normal? Is this a winter one? Is this a weird yeah. one? Like this is the really interesting stuff. And that's- That just takes a lot, of, a lot of data then. Time and money. It's, it's Time and money solves. <laughs> Time oh, and money solves gonna happen. Oh, he's gone extinct. All right. Um, dead. <laughs> dead to be fossilized. I think I got what I came for. I think uh, we've improved this dinosaur dramatically. I'll have to send it, take it's, a photo it's, it's of this genuinely not much and worse. send it to the... Uh, China. China. Yeah. Send it to China, and I'm sure I'll hear back from them soon. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. It turns out I got my answer. We can know the color of dinosaurs to some extent. Dave Hone has told us that we can look at melanosomes in microfossils, and these can tell us the color of the feathers. And because these traits are shared by the ancestors of dinosaurs, which are modern day birds, we can infer the same colors in dinosaurs as we see in birds now. We still don't know all of the possible colors, but who knows, maybe someday we'll find a hot pink dinosaur. That would make my day. Remember that between the question and the answer are all of the really tasty bits. I'll hear back from them soon. Dave, thanks so much. Oh, ah, sorry, sorry. It's still COVID. Oh, God. No, right? Wait, let's try that again. <laughs> actually, we don't Dave, thanks so much. Thank you. 
You'll like me to clear up. <laughs> yeah, take it with me? Yeah, Craig yeah. just walks yeah. out of shock. Let's try it again. Try it again, ready? Yeah.